Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Thinker Thema. I'm Amy, this is my Hello. wife Maggie and we've just returned from Tokyo Game Market. Yes. So we were in Japan for one week and we of course went on the weekend to Tokyo Game Market. Mm. It's the second time that we've been to the spring show. Yeah. Um, so we've actually only been to the spring show. Um, if you don't know already, Tokyo Game Market has two shows every year, one in spring and one in autumn. The autumn one is meant to be bigger with more yeah. big game releases. But probably uh, colder. Considerably yeah, getting colder. Yeah. yeah, getting colder. Um, but we just happened to be there like both times around this time. Yeah. So uh, we wanted to share a little bit about it this time. In case you're thinking about going to Tokyo Game Market, everyone want, everyone asks us, how do, how do you get tickets? Yeah. But there are plenty of tickets that you can buy at the door. The first time we went, we were really disorganized and we got there quite late in the day. Yeah, that's right. Because yeah. we just thought we'd go and check it out. Mm. And we walked straight in. So we bought tickets and walked straight in. This time we got there at opening time. There is a way to get tickets that let you in earlier, I believe, yeah, at 11am. Like pre-buy it beforehand yeah. and then be able to actually get access earlier, which is pretty cool. I don't know. I, we haven't done that before. I've heard you do need a Japanese cell phone number to mm. do that, but there might be a way around that. But either way, we got there this time right around uh, just before I was about to open at midday. Yes. And so we had to actually line up for an hour, which is yeah. not too bad. The line was super long. The line super was long. super intimidating. Like yeah. when we first arrived and they're like, oh, no, 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 keep going. And keep then going. you see that there's lines and lines. You're like, oh, no, but not, that actually, not that line. All that line. line. All Those that are line. the ones that are queued to go in. But then, <laughs> so, oh, yeah. And but it was it raining. Actually, and it was raining. Yeah, but it actually wasn't. Like, considering the amount of people, it didn't take that long. It was actually no. a very well-run operation. Yeah. yeah, so one hour, and as soon as we got to the front of the line, they were like, do you want to buy a ticket? We yeah. bought a ticket, and then just went straight in. So even if we'd had a ticket, mm. at that point, we would have had to line up. Because yes. most people had a ticket that were in the same line we are in. So yeah. don't worry if you don't get a ticket in advance. You can just turn up. Mm. Um, of course, then you risk, you know, not getting the games that sell out. But, yeah, um, if there's going to be a rush at the very start yes. from, yeah. Which, but, I don't know, did that happen to you? Because you were the one who had a list no, of things. Uh, well, this is the thing. I wanted to talk a bit about the research that we did, which mm. was not much. So... Mine um, was zero. I'm not the researcher in the family. I just turn up and I'm like, oh. Yeah, but the thing is about Tokyo Game Market, it's a lot of small publishers and a yes. lot of self-publishers. So designers who are self-publishing and they only bring a few copies of their game, mm. which is amazing because there's all these really quirky games, mm. quirky themes, a lot of trick-taking. If you don't know, Japan is very famous for trick-taking yeah. and card-shedding card games mm. um, but the thing is it's really hard to get information on these new releases uh, before it happens so I believe there's like a, um, a brochure or a guide that comes out before it that's talking about some of the new releases mm. um, but also some people who are just fans of Japanese games they do talk about them on BGG mm. so I did a little bit of research and by a little bit I meant like on the flight over I was looking up what was being released and making a rough list but I didn't I didn't put it against locations where their booths were going no. to be. So their, it was a bit of a their mess. Their website is pretty good, though. At least it was this time around. Mm -hmm. You could actually look up if you knew by name. And there was a little bit of, like, figuring out what it was and then translating it into the, the actual, like, sort of Japanese writing for it. And then it would give you the exact booth and location and a little bit of information about the game. So And the whole thing is quite well mapped in, in terms of the, the stalls. Yes. So it is, yeah. It's you doable. Could, yeah, it is doable. But if you are like completely inexperienced with the Japanese language, I, I speak a tiny bit of Japanese, mm. enough to make it like a little bit helpful when interacting with designers and with publishers. But um, I have to say, it's quite a challenging con if to purchase games mm. if you don't speak Japanese. There, even a lot of the games, they don't come with an English rule book. Yeah. They don't have English rule books on hand. So the best way to experience Tokyo Game Market is just to turn up and buy some games that look appealing. Yeah. That maybe some of them you're able to find them on BGG and just mm. have a really good time. And that's really what we did. We just we just went, mm. and um, that was the best because we had some great company. We went with Monique and Naveen yeah. from Before 
where you play. We were actually traveling with them the yeah. whole time. Um, so that was wonderful. That was really great. Yeah. yeah. And we got to meet Jay from Cardboard yes, East, who yes. also gave us some uh, great advice and some games to check out. And we got a little bit of a haul. So mm. overall, I think we came home with around 40 games from Japan. In total. In yeah. total. Not just from the Tokyo Game Market. Yeah. Just in total. <laughs> and we'll start by um, talking about the ones we picked up at Tokyo Game Market. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we haven't played them all, but a little bit of just what we'd heard about them or what yeah. we've read about them. Um, but if you want to hang around for the second part of the video, we'll also talk about buying games in Tokyo in general and some of the other games we picked up along the way. Just jump around the timestamps yeah. time to stamps whatever you would like to see. The first game that I'll talk about is a game called Nana Toddy Dotty, mm. which is a game where you are in a castle and there's been a bird party oh. and you are sending the guests home. Okay. Uh, in other words, you're trying to shed bird card okay. hands out of your hand. <laughs> and this is actually a re-implementation or a simplification of a game called Hachi Train, which I believe is a predecessor, don't quote me on this, but I believe it's a predecessor to Scout. And so ah, okay. it's a similar, a similar card shedding game where you're trying to get rid of all the birds in your hand. But interestingly, in this game, you have um, a run of cards in your hand, but you can't, you can't change the order of mm-hmm. them. Yep. But you can get rid of them if they are sets of numbers. Mm-hmm. And uh, one option that you have in the game is when you shed some cards, you can actually pick up cards that are on the table. So that means I could pick up the six to add it to my six, and now I have a pair of sixes in my hand that because you can be, yeah. insert it anywhere in your hand. Very scout like. Like, yes, yeah. I can see the, the <laughs> correlation. Yeah. yeah, and so it the is artwork to, is really cute as well. It's really like, cute. Just these beautiful little uh, like animals and yeah, well, birds, like, very colorful peacocks and budgies and all sorts of cute little yeah. uh, illustrations on here. Um, it seems pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah, but I'm keen to That's, check it out. We haven't yeah. played it yet, so uh, we like card shedding games. I love them. I don't know why. It's one of those like we don't play a lot of them. We but don't. Then, but then when I do, I'm like, oh. you're, well, you're quite good at them and you're good at trick taking. So hmm. sometimes uh, this whole pile is going to be a world of pain Sometimes for me. this was a, this was the exception. So <laughs> this little game, this is not one of the games that I'm good at, but it's super cute. So it's called Peas. Um, and what you're doing, you have this sort of uh, line of 10 different cards. It's a pea pod. Do I have to be the themer for you? It's well, like, oh, oh so- yeah, it is. Yeah, you're right. It is a pea pod. And then in the, but, but it's got a lot it's of cute. It's, yeah, it's very cute. So it's like all the little cards together create this sort of really long pea pod. And then you've got some of the cards uh, are peas, which are points, and some of them are worms, which are minus uh, points. And the way it's going to play out, it's a trick-taking uh, game for two players. So each player plays on either side, and you're going to be playing your cards to different locations, which will then become tricks that are going to be played in those areas. So the way it would kind of go is I might play a blue three and then in that location it means that if Amy is going to play against that location she would have to follow follow. yeah Yeah. you you, Mm -hmm. would have to follow suit so if she's got a blue she would have to play a blue unless she leaves it till later on where then you know she can kind of play any suit but the interesting thing about this is the way that you determine who wins is usually like you know higher um, in the in the lead or the in the lead suit whoever plays the highest card will win but it, the game kind of changes in that as you're progressing through, you'll uh, the, like you'll you'll kind of go from the from left to, to right or from the start. Yeah. As someone tr- is winning yeah. it, the tricks don't resolve until the end of the game. Yes, exactly until the very end. So once all of the cards have been set up in their positions, then you start one by one resolving. And what might happen is then as soon as someone wins then they take uh, the lead. So they become, so whatever they play next is going to be the lead suit. So you might have played something thinking, oh, I really don't want that. I'm going to play off, like I'm going to play something that like uh, uh, a lower number, for example. But if you win the previous trick because of the way things mm-hmm. kind of worked out, now it doesn't matter what now you play. Now your low card is the yeah. lead suit yeah. and the other play- player may have played off suit exactly. and you've won that trick or you've won the negative wormy points. So it could be very uh, unpredictable or just really bad planning on my part. Hard. Like I can't. It's very hard to sort of see and calculate by that point how many will Amy have won versus me, and what who will have the lead. Yeah. So it's super. It is thinky. very strategic because you have to plan it 
quite ahead. Yeah, it's super yeah. thinky, even though it's like obviously a very, very uh, tiny box. I am very, very bad. <laughs> it's, it's really cute. I really like it. It's super cute. It. Yeah, it's cute piece. Twist. And you don't often get two player trick taking games. I, although no. I feel like we say that a lot because now there's more and more of them. That's um, true. But yeah. the next one is an older game um, that I had heard of and I had put on my list and I was hoping to find it and I did at Tokyo Game Market. This trick and trade. Mm -hmm. um, now it's a very light theme. Uh, it's a cryptocurrency theme. Yeah. Uh, where, but basically, it's an economic style game. And in this game, it's a may follow trick taking game. So you don't have to follow the lead suit. Um, but what's interesting about it is that the cards all relate to a particular cryptocurrency. Mm. So there's these four cryptocurrencies and you're going to be influencing the value of those currencies. And what's interesting about it is the player's card that wins the trick is going to contribute mm. to the value of these cryptocurrencies, but the value of the value that it's going to add is inversely proportionate to the value that is played. What I mean is, if you play a high card that's going to win you the suit, mm. it's only a low influence on the value of that's the cryptocurrency. Right. So it's got two numbers, so the cards have yeah the, the yes. kind of value of playing and then the value that it'll add. So if you mm. manage to win a trick with a low card, mm. it's going to actually really sway the value of the cryptocurrency. And yeah. why do you want to sway the value of the cryptocurrency? Because when you win the trick, you also have the opportunity to take one of the scoring cards mm. and the scoring cards are taken in order of the order in which the players fall in yep. that particular trick. And on these um, cards, there's just different holdings of each of these mm. cryptocurrencies. And so, as you might expect, at the end of the game, you're going to multiply out your holdings in a particular cryptocurrency with the value they have at the end of the game. Yeah. Uh, I, th I thought it was really clever. We yeah. did. We did manage to um, play a couple. No, one game of this, I think, with Monique and Naveen, and yeah, it's just I really enjoyed it. It gets really um, kind of mean in a way because you can see what people are collecting, and if you're not invested in that because you haven't really taken mm -hmm. a card that you know that has those those tokens, you're gonna be like, I'm gonna bring down the value yes. of of like for example, there might be a very high value card already played, meaning a low value card for the trick, but high value in terms of what it would add to that. And then you can play the higher value, which will win the trick, but it's going to like only add maybe one or two points of value. And be so, yeah. because it's may follow, you can trash cards that would actually add a lot of value to other, mm. other cryptocurrency. So you are trying to be opt opportunistic as well to get rid of cards that would help your opponents with their holdings. Mm. So that's really clever. I yeah. also like the um, idea that it's not the person who wins the trick that leads the next trick. In fact, instead of taking your choice of scoring card, you can take a first player oh, yes. card. That's right. And that was really clever too. So just a nice little twist, yeah. a, a great little design. I can see why people love it as much as they do. That's trick and trade. Now, this one is a really interesting one. This is King's Trick Takers. Now, this is a really, we got this sort of deluxe uh, edition. It was on Kickstarter. It was a Kickstarter. Apparently delivered from Kickstarter in record time and mm. is an evolution of a game called Trick Takers. Yes. So that, that was a well-loved trick taking game. And yeah. now they've made this, uh, evolution of the game. Yeah, and so it's quite an interesting one because it's it's got a lot going on. It's probably one of, if not the most complex uh, trick-taking games I've ever seen because you also then have the whole draft, there's a whole drafting um, part of it where you have all these different uh, sort of suits with unique like asymmetric abilities. So then there's there's actual like full player aids in terms of like what do all of these things do. Mm -hmm. Then there's also the actual trick taking um, kind of game. But then it's like with the king suits that you that you get, then you're also kind of recruiting uh, sort of like who the followers are going to be. And they also have un unique abilities that then means your scoring at the end of each round is going to be very different. So it is it's just massive like they've sort of crammed a lot of different i'm super scared of it but i'm really excited about it because people describe it as the root of trick taking yeah, games yeah because yeah. all the different factions sort of play very differently and mm -hmm. then you're going to have very different sort of strategies depending on which one you play so that's super interesting but then the other thing is that the luxified components are really beautiful so, so like beautiful. there's this sort of like the sort of 3d um the raced sort of a tactile thing on the uh, on the box and on the cards the uh, the Emboss, I think it's like yeah, yeah the wooden um, little wooden tokens and it's just 
and it's just beautiful it's a beautiful production so we were really lucky to at the end of the because it's, it's one of those like we were umming and ahhing yeah, about it we were. and then by the end of the day but it, I mean you can see why it was there's expensive a lot yeah there's, there's a lot in yeah. it um, yeah at the end of the day we're like come on let's do it and then they're like I think we've run out we like we don't actually have yeah. any and luckily I don't even know how they managed to find one last little copy in no someone the, hadn't picked up their oh, pre-order yes, yes. And, and so and yeah. then they were so kind they gave us all these little extras they gave us the English Booklet. English yeah. rule book is so probably like, going to be oh, the biggest. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So excited to give that a go. Yeah. And to thank you for the out. recommendation from Jay at Cardboard East yes. because um, yes. that's the reason why we chased that one down. Yeah. Um, the next one is called Okami by Wolf. Well, sorry, Wolf. Tricky. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading that because lucky you can read that. Otherwise, this, it would have been like that. Okami means to use Google. Okami Translate. means Wolf, and then it's um, by Trick. So it's Wolf by Trick, mm-hmm. essentially. Um, and this game, I don't know, we haven't played this game yet, um, but it just looked really cute. It's kind of cute artwork. And it's the theme is that you've just moved into a new town and you're desperately trying to convince them that you're not a werewolf. <laughs> don't um, protest too yeah. much. <laughs> yeah. um, I think so. Um, and it's, I can you imagine it's... moving into a new town going, hi, I'm Maggie, and, and I'm, I'm not, not a werewolf. A wo- like, werewolf. Oh, don't okay. believe what you've heard. <laughs> Okay. Um, it's, it's strange. But the idea is that the person who's kind of left standing out under the moon is going to turn into a werewolf or something, or the first, the first, the leader. And so what you want to do is you want to come second in this game. Mm-hmm. So the first person will be revealed to be a werewolf and the second person will be the winner because you're a werewolf and you disguised yourself. I don't know. Um, but also on the cards, there's like moon icons. And mm. so there's something to do with, I think, the cards that you're taking in tricks and making right. sure that you're balancing different elements of the moon. Yeah. I don't know. That sounds but cute. It yeah. sounds really cute. And I really liked the idea of yeah. it. So, so that'd um, be a cool. Yeah, that'd yeah. be an interesting one to play. Good one to check it out. And then we'll talk about these more when we've played them. <laughs> okay, I'll talk about this one. Uh, Nightmare Millionaire. <laughs> this is a hilarious story. <laughs> So I was trying to, we were trying to kind of learn games so that then at the end of the, uh, at the end of the night, after we'd been sort of in, in Tokyo all day. Adventuring in Tokyo. Yeah. Then, you know, you're tired and say, like, well, let's just play some games. So I was like, okay, well, I'll try and learn, I'll try and learn this game to then teach it to Amy and Monique and Naveen and we can all play we it together. All, we were all learning. <laughs> Everyone was learning a game each. And then teaching. And then teaching yeah. kind of like the rest. Mm-hmm. So it's a very efficient way of, uh, of getting through games. So there was no English translation of this. So I was having to like use my uh, Google Translate to try and figure out what it was and as I was reading I was like oh this actually sounds a lot like 535 which is a kind of hand shedding game which I really really enjoyed first time I played it was a Dire Star West um really need to get our hands on one of the <laughs> a copy of that because I it's, this game is not similar <laughs> so, I was, I was, I was, so I was reading this I was like oh this is essentially like very similar it's essentially the same as uh 535 no, um and so then I went on to teach it as <laughs> Five three five, but it's got it's not the same game, um, and it's got all these different cards that are like, um, you don't you don't just play regular kind of numbers. You, you can actually make up a number by having cards that have a like a plus two. So it's like if you have the same suit, you can play you know a one and the plus two, and then that becomes a three. So you can actually make up some numbers without having to have sequences and without having to have like you know the doubles and things like that. So as we were trying to play this, I was like, this does not make sense. Like this does not, something feels broken. <laughs> this. And so went back and it turns out it's a very, you know, it's a fairly different game. It has a lot of similarities. I will say it is hand shedding um, and it is it's <laughs> the same. It. And one of us would be like, this fact is no sense. It's like, you're you like, sure? Yes. And I'm like, I'm not sure. No, I'm not sure. So let's go back and try and like figure it out. So we eventually figured it out. It is similar to... 535. It's actually the same designer. Which we didn't know when we, we purchased didn't know. it. So this yeah. was just one that I think we had read about or there was it was on a list somewhere and the, it was the artwork that really caught out. Artwork. And Maggie was like, I must have that game because of the it's artwork. It's super quick. Like it's really beautiful, like Halloween, um, like saturated colors. And yeah, so I, I love, love, love the artwork. And so, yeah, you're essentially just, just trying to yeah shed your hand. But that's the main like... Uh, thing about it is the fact that then you have these yeah plus cards that then mm-hmm. allow you give you more freedom in terms of making up your sequences or making up your you know multiples of a kind i'm looking sort of forward stuff. to playing it again the right way and and uh, we did kind, kind of eventually kind play of eventually it the right the right way it was but... just it was actually it was like such a funny <laughs> memory um of trying to learn this very simple game between the four of us yeah 
Well, and the it? whole time I was like, you know what? This actually really makes me miss uh, 535. We should just get a copy of 535. <laughs> so very similar, but with a bit of a twist. Uh, very cute game. Yes, yeah, very cute game. So that was uh, Nightmare Millionaire. Uh, the next game is one called Twinkle Starship, and this was a launch at um, uh, Tokyo Game Market as well. Mm. But actually, it's the re-implementation of, uh, by the same designer, uh, Segment Tricks. And Segment Tricks is a very well-loved trick-taking game, mm. but Twinkle Starship has put it into a different universe, which is space-themed, which is possibly the most... Pasted on thing. <laughs> there is no, no I, reason. I don't even think the cards no are particularly thematic. Like nah. the cards, they're it's not, just like a digital. They're not even space like digital number sort of. No. Yeah. The theme, like it could be literally called anything. Very anything. Strange. At least segment tricks does explain kind of how the game works because the most interesting mm. thing about this trick taking game is that you are given some segments of numbers at the start of the game. And you are going to be able to allocate those onto cards in order to manipulate the number shown on the card. Mm. So you can change a 2 to an 8 by adding two lines to it mm -hmm. to make a full 8. Yeah. So you don't really know what someone's going to play and you can't do any card counting or anything yeah. because people are manipulating yeah. um, what they have. You're changing what the number is going to be. Yeah. yeah. And then the segments play an interesting part in scoring as well. And so, yeah, it, it's a really cute little twist mm. on the genre. Um, I yeah. really liked it and I want to play more of it. We only played it once with Monique and Naveen, but yeah, it was kind of a cool concept. Yeah. So it's interesting. Yeah, the whole, yeah, adding the little bits of like the little wooden tokens to mm -hmm. change the numbers and going, wait, that doesn't make that number. Wait. <laughs> so, yeah, that was yeah. an interesting one. I liked it. Yeah. Very cute. So the other one was uh, no Nokosu Dice. Nokosu, da no Nokosu, Nokosu Dice. Dice. Um, so. This one um, actually is an, an older game. Um, I think it's from around 2016. And this is a game that um, Naveen and I had both read. Mm. Was an excellent game to pick up in Japan. Excellent mm -hmm. trick-taking game. And so when we compared our lists of must-buy, we were like both like, okay, we're, we have to find mm. this game. And I don't know where they found it because yeah. they just happened to come back to us and be like, we got two, we got the last, the last two, two copies. copies. Yeah. So it must have been the publisher who just happened to have some extra copies because as far as I know, very hard to find. Yeah. So this is an interesting one because the whole aim of this is at the end of the game, you're going to be kind of getting rid of dice and you want to be able to finish with the dice that has the number on it based on, was it the, the same as the number of so basically the, the, dice, one? the dice is sitting in front of you and they're public information and mm -hmm. they're essentially an extension of your hand of yeah. cards. And so during the trick taking process, you can play either cards from your hand or the dice that are in front of you. Mm -hmm. And because that's public information, sometimes I can see that, you know, Maggie's actually going to be able to beat me just with the dice that she has in front of her. But is she going to get rid of that dice? And the reason that die and the reason <laughs> is because... At the end, you need to have one die left over, yeah. and that die dictates how many tricks you need to have won in order to get Your the bonus bit. points. And yeah. so that is really, really, really clever. Because in the whole way through, you're like, oh, I could play this die, and then, but then it means that I'm only leaving myself with this number of tricks, and I'm nowhere near getting that number of tricks. So that becomes a really interesting dynamic. And it's a like substantial amount of bonus mm. points as yeah. well. And the points you get depends on how many people achieve their objective. Mm. So if other people have gone bust and you can tell that they're not going to do it, mm. um, then you're going to get more points. And so sometimes even if you've met your objective, you really want to make sure nobody else gets their objective. And mm. so that's a really nice twist. You can also uh, shoot the moon or say that you're going to get no tricks. And that means that you actually won't have a, a die left in front of you to signal oh, that yeah. you need to have no tricks yeah. and then you can get points for that too. So yeah, uh, it is a really cool concept. Yeah. Really thinky. Yeah, that was a really, lot going on. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was an interesting one. I, I really enjoy that concept of having that leftover die, and mm. it, but I'll be being able to kind of uh, manipulate that along the way, or sort of deciding which one that's going to be, mm -hmm. and then that determining what your bid is. So that was an interesting one. And this so, one is, I'll talk about this one because I know nothing about it really, aside from that it's super cute and it was um, Mush Smash. <laughs> And there was a long line of people picking up this game. And I'd also, uh, I saw the artwork prior to attending mm, the con. It's very cute. Yeah. And it's really, I believe, 
it's kind of like a dexterity yeah. game where you're setting yeah. up mushrooms and then you are flicking um, a little token on them to try and knock over mushrooms. That is as much as I know, honestly. <laughs> but it was cute enough and popular enough mm -hmm. that I got the FOMO and I had to get a copy. So that yeah. is Mush Smash. And it's very pretty that's all though. I know. Yeah, I don't I even think it it's, I don't even think it's on BGG, honestly. It's uh, very yeah. hard to find anything very about cute. it. Yeah, that's essentially like what it shows on the back. It's like, take the thing, hit the mushroom, and then... And I it think, looks really beautiful. They had oh, it set up. I think up. it might be uh, order fulfillment then. Ah, so it's like you're yes. trying to get particular color mushroom tops. We will Is see. Is that what you call it? Mushroom hot tops? Heads? Um, and the next set, uh, technically I've kept these separate because mm -hmm. uh, we were gifted these games from a couple of different publishers. Um, one publisher is from Korea, uh, Plate Games. If you hadn't, haven't heard of them, they make these little box games. We covered them, mm -hmm. uh, we covered one of their campaigns and bought all of their games from that yep. same campaign. Yeah. Um, and just love what they're doing in terms of, they're doing like, re-implementations of older mm. games, bringing them into this smaller box format yep. in some instances, re-theming them, and they do a really beautiful job of illustrating them. Actually, we met their main yes. illustrator who signed yes, some of our games yeah. for us, which is really super cool. cute. Yeah. Um, there's a few here, they, uh, they gave us some of their newer ones. Uh, Tasso Banana, which is a little dexterity game where you're trying to stack bananas on top of each other. Um, Venice Connection, which is a tile layer that we haven't played yet, mm -hmm. but this is an older game, I believe. Mm, Who's yeah. the designer of that? Alex Randolph. Yeah. Um, this is also an older game, Easy Come, Easy Go by Reina Knizia. Mm -hmm. um, this is a Yahtzee style game where you're rolling and re-rolling and I think there's a little bit of like stealing other people's rolls and mm. things. Um, but the, the two main ones uh, probably I'll talk about is Halepin No, mm -hmm. which is actually a re-implementation of a game called Peppers that we saw everywhere secondhand in Japanese mm. game shops. So um, obviously trick taking is a big thing over there yeah. and this Peppers game seemed to be really popular. Um, but Halepin No is this new <laughs> version of it. So still with a pepper yeah. chili theme. Yeah. Um, and in this game, what's interesting is you have these jalapeno cards which sit outside of your hand. So they're the ones. Yeah. And they you can always see. Yeah. yeah you can where see they are. who has them who has and them. where they are. And basically, if you're left with them at the end of the game, they're going to be negative points mm. in and of themselves and cause negative points for the same suits within the tricks that you've won. Mm. So they're very problematic to have. Yeah, but you, you don't. Can, <laughs> you, you, you are not to the jalapeno. No. Yeah. But you can actually play with them in tricks so you can mm -hmm. use them instead of cards in your hand to play into tricks and the person who then wins that trick is stuck with this pepper yeah so what you're doing is you're just moving them around yeah. and towards the end it got a it, it was like there was little you could do towards the end of the game sometimes yeah. to stop yourself from being piled on by everybody's because the thing is when you win it so if you win that that jalapeno it, it, you don't get to just put it aside and go well that's part of a one trick and like it just you it's stuck. It's you, you keep it. You can sort of keep sharing it around, and you sort of it becomes a permanent part of your or, yeah. or, or yeah, temporary part of your of your hand. Unless yeah, until I didn't you can even say get this. Rid of it. This is a Kramer and Keesling game. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it becomes a lot about the timing of going. Ah, oh, if I know that I leave myself to the point where I'm going to play a suit and then that person's going to be able to get rid of mm. that jalapeno where I'm going to get stuck with it. So it's, it's an cute. interesting one yeah, it's with cute. the timing. Yeah. Um, a nice twist. Actually, I want to play it more. Just to okay. get it set. Like, uh, I didn't feel like I had much control over the ending, but I'm going to play it more. No, I think it's happens. one of those that the more you play it, the yeah. more you start understanding the dynamics. And the cards that you don't want to be left with at yeah. the end. And you can probably like see, that. you know, your the end yeah. sooner. And you're like, oh, like, no, oh, there's now no games. way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Stereo Mind, which is one of their more recent releases as well. And this is a really interesting cooperative party game. Um, but it's, it takes ideas from, you know, a lot of other party games. But this is a really cool twist, I think. So um, in this game, you are given five words on on a sheet that all relate to a particular category. So it might be like Independence Day versus Halloween versus Thanksgiving, whatever. Uh, or it could be um, robots versus mm -hmm. goblins versus yeah. something else. Um, and so it's just this list of words. And then what happens is the lead player is going to scan a card that is going to link to a YouTube video that plays a music track. 
and everybody has a little dial in front of them and they have to change that dial to the number that corresponds to the word that they think best describes that song. Mm -hmm. And so you're trying to go for this hive mind effect of, mm. well, no, how could you possibly think that song was robot-like? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that, that style of game yeah. where you're just trying to all get on the same page about, like, wavelength or something like that, yeah. where you're all trying to um, categorise something. Yeah. We haven't had a chance to play this yet, but it sounds really interesting. And from yeah. listening to some of the little... Yeah, I had to play tracks, around. Yeah. It works really well. The scanning of the yeah. QR code to bring up the YouTube link. It's really easy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it just seems really There's cute. There's one that was like cranberry or something. I was like, how do you do cranberry or like a oh, cocktail like, or something? Oh, cranberry juice special. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was like, like, how do you how do, you do that? Music? And yeah. then I played a song and it was like clearly this country track and I was like, oh, whiskey. Like, yeah. right. was it country? I don't think it was. But see, we're already disagreeing on that. <laughs> it definitely song. was country-like. No, it was like um, it was like a twanging, yeah. It was like a yeah. Anyways, anyways. that'll be an interesting one uh, to to play. Um, and mm. this little game uh, is by Daryl Chow. And if you don't know Daryl mm. Chow, he is a designer slash publisher from Singapore. Yeah. And he was there at the show, and it was lovely to meet him as well. Um, he does walk and roll. Um, if you've heard of that game, he's got games about durians and yes. Plantopia. Yes. Um, but this is Reef Rescue, which he said you have to have a copy of this game because it's like you know Pacific Ocean. It's Australian. Yeah. You've got yeah, to the, check yeah. it out. Um, but I, I don't know too much about this game. We haven't played it yet, but it's a push your luck style mm, game. So yeah. interested to give this little card game a go. And one thing I really love about his designs is that they always are trying to highlight something about the region. Mm, uh, yeah. Or a lot of his games do. Yeah, so. yeah a lot of the games yeah, are great. Really celebratory. Yeah. Of yeah, their culture. All so right. that's all the games that we purchased at Tokyo Game Market. But if you give us a second to put these away and grab the other games, or if you're interested in general about what it's like to shop for board games in Tokyo, because we did plenty of mm -hmm. it in seven mm -hmm. days, um, stay tuned and we'll be back in a moment. Okay. And we're back with mm -hmm. more games. Magic. Many more games. <laughs> because one of our favorite things to do in Japan is to go shopping at all of the second hand game they have some shops. pretty big stores some of them are board game specific but a lot of them are just hobby yes stores and they are massive and then their secondhand section is so good and it's they, great and yeah, I, you're just like yeah. treasure hunting it's and just so i good. think they're really good at going through them and making sure everything is complete yes. and then a lot of the time they re-shrink them yes so they're there they're in great condition mm. and there's all these titles you can go treasure hunting for all of those old japanese Look, games that you couldn't pick up as someone who loves like fiddly things i could see sometimes because we would often go into the same shop many days every in a day. row. <laughs> it was like our daily every stop. Day. It's like first coffee, then back to the same board game store to mm -hmm. see what they've got today because they have like new stock of They're the secondhand high, stuff. Yeah, pretty high turnover. Yeah. And I would always kind of glance over and then there would be one of their, their shop attendants mm -hmm. counting and like kind of going through the games and putting everything back in. And I'm like, I wouldn't not mind that job i actually I quite that i job. actually quite enjoy like putting things away accounting and, like, for all of the yeah just making oh, sure no. and then putting everything in and then yes yeah, putting it its own like little i yeah i, I like that anyway that's nightmare that's but as an I, aside <laughs> i get uh like i love treasure hunting she and does. so this was one of my favorite elements of the trip we stayed this time in akihabara which mm. is the otaku kind of capital of tokyo it's where all of the um, gaming and manga and the anime, anime yeah. and everything everything is centered there. If you collect something in the hobby world, wow. yeah. it's going to be in Akihabara. And yeah. so this time we stayed in a new hotel that's actually opened um, post-COVID. No, this isn't sponsored content, but mm. I just wanted to tell people because mm. I think it's called JR East and it's yes. located inside Akihabara Station. Super quiet, but so centrally located. Yeah. So you can get on a train and go anywhere in Tokyo um, so convenient yeah. you just like take the lift downstairs and you're literally in the center of in, Akihabara in the heart of Akihabara and it was surprisingly quiet considering you're quite like right at in the, the heart station. of everything the hustle and bustle but yeah they've got some really good uh, noise cancellation sort of windows or fittings yeah, but, yeah it was really good and so the main places to get um, board games and secondhand board games uh, a lot of them are in Akihabara there are also um, areas like 
Ik uh, Ikibukuro and um, Shibuya and Shinjuku that also have some of the similar retailers. And you know, we haven't been to Japan um, post pandemic. This is the first this time. This is the first trip. Yeah. yeah. And so there are some retailers that have closed down or changed a little bit.、Mm. Um, and so we'll provide some links down below with some of the ones that we frequented most often. Yellow Submarine is, of course,、yep. one of the biggest retailers. They have stores kind of all over Tokyo and especially in those four locations、yep. I just mentioned.、Um, but in Akihabara, they actually have two stores, and they seem to be independently owned. I think,、mm. um, but we were going to both of them ev- pretty every much day. Every, day, every day, just to see what they what they got in because they were also getting some of the new games from Tokyo Game Market、yes. trickling through. That's pretty、um, cool. Yeah. yeah, so we were looking for new games, new releases,、yeah. as well as. New secondhand games that had had yeah, popped up, fresh、well. secondhand stock that yeah. Yeah, might have arrived. And the other big one is this、uh, blue building that you'll see everywhere,、mm. which is called、um, Surugaya. Which is a secondhand hobby store,、um, but you have to find the one that is specific to board games or the one that stocks board、yes. games because all of the stores have different specialties. And so there's one in Akihabara. There's also a really big one in、uh, Shinjuku,、mm-hmm. I believe. Yeah,、um, yeah. There's a big one there,、uh, kind of on level five of a big. Yeah, um, shopping centre,、uh, and they have fairly big secondhand game sections、yeah. there as well. So we were frequenting them a lot and trying to find some of these treasures. And then the thing with treasure hunting is you find a treasure, and then at night I would make another list of another、yeah. grail game that I have to find. And so it was, so was so always、cool. a list of. If you see this cover, if you see, and that's the other thing. A lot of times you can't make out the name because obviously it's written in Japanese, and so、mm-hmm. yeah, that Google Lens was. My best friend, because it was like sometimes you just had to do an image search and then hope that the cover would have a hit somewhere, and then、uh, by that you would be able to figure out, oh, this、mm. is linked into that game. A lot of the times there wasn't a BGG entry for them, but then you'd be able to at least get the rules and figure out what the game is, and so there was a lot of that. Yeah,、so、it's yeah. And most of the games we were looking for were small box games because、yes. card games are so popular in Japan. They、yeah. of course have all of the bigger titles as well, but a lot of those are kind of more of the Western titles. So、yeah. we were on the lookout for little. Japanese games,、yep. and so we'll talk you through some of them. We haven't played a lot of them. Some we have, some we haven't.、Mm-hmm. Um, the first three that I'll talk about is this little set of games by Hisashi Hiyashi,、mm-hmm. who we actually got to meet. Yes, at the Tokyo Game Market. At Tokyo Game Market,、yeah. which was super exciting.、Um, if you don't know, he is the、um, designer of Yokohama. Yes,、uh, which is as well as a number of other games. Metro that's X. Probably,、uh, Metro X. Another one that I love. Yes, yeah. Yeah, that's probably your favorite. Yeah, of I his love、games. that game. Yeah. Which is outrageous because there's there's sort of a theme, but it's just very very it's、uh, very abstract. abstract. It's just numbers, but I love it. <laughs>、um, but this set of games were just caught my eye immediately. We bought these new,、um, but these games are Capi Capi Butter Capi Butter and Capi Butter Capi Butter and Goat and Goat and Sheep and Sheep. And so they're all animal themed, and they're all really cute. I、But、believe they're, they're all illustrated by his wife. Actually, I think、so、his wife of, does、yeah. all of his illustrating,、yeah. apparently. And she was also there, so it was she cool. She was to, there yeah, as, well.、Um, as well. But the one that we played the most of was this capybara and capybara,、mm. which is an interesting little game. It's a bit hard to explain, but what you're trying to do is you're trying to、um, align a set of different coloured. Capybaras、mm. in front of you in order to do、uh, order fulfillment. Yeah, fulfill these orders by having you know a set number of the combination of of capybaras, and then you have this little monkey which is like your marker jumping on their back that jumps yeah from one to the other, and then and then the whole thing is about moving the monkey back, like resetting it, so that then you can fulfill another、uh, order, and、yes. then trying to see of the orders that are available, which ones. Am I close to fulfilling which capybaras would I need to come in and, and insert at some yeah, point? Yeah, because they all have to be in the right order as、yes. well. So you've got different coloured, different lettered capybaras. They all have to be in the exact right order,、um, or like. I can't remember they if that's exactly. They have to be adjacent to each other. Well, they just have to be adjacent to each other. They can't have、yeah. a rogue color in between, and so that's what makes it really interesting. And there's also this like almost race-like element because you can fulfill orders from、um, in front of in front of the yeah. Someone can、people. fulfill like you could be working towards an order, and someone else fulfills it, and then that order is gone. Yeah,、so. but there's this issue of moving the monkey back because <laughs> it takes time and it it actually forgoes your turn. It only moves like three steps back at a time, and sometimes you have. A really, really long row of capybaras, and then you can upgrade the monkey once you've fulfilled. I think it's like three <clears throat> of the the recipes. 
to four will be four at a time, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's like it's a big difference. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, the best way to explain the mechanic is you have to move the monkey forward, and the further you move the fun- monkey forward, the more cards you get to draft that have capybaras on them. Yeah, that's for that. But you have to also jump forward in order to jump over the correct cards. The correct set of cards. For the cards. order yeah. fulfillment. So yeah. you've got to rewind the monkey all the time yeah. to like bring it forward. Yeah. Anyways, anyway, cute. yeah, <laughs> that makes no sense without seeing no. it. Um, but it's pretty cute. Like I really enjoy like the colorfulness of the graphic. It's design really novel as well as yeah. a design. I, yeah. I really appreciated it mechanically. It's really yeah. cute. The other two we haven't played. No, um, so but they're completely different games. Yeah, Sheep and Sheep sounds actually quite similar to um, almost Skulls of Sedlik, that button shy game where it's all about you kind of building these adjacencies and then they're they're scoring based on the adjacencies that they have with mm-hmm. with one one another um with goat and goat uh i don't really know yeah i know that you're trying to use your goats like the goats have to align in a certain way in order to then be able to climb mountains and then you're getting kind of mountain cards by playing the right goat numbers but i don't know anything beyond that don't know so you'll have to just wait i until mean we the <laughs> main the reason we picked them. these up were designer and also my sister just loves goat and capybaras, and capybaras so yes. we thought well Maybe she would love to play those with us. Yeah, we this assume. is true. This is true. We'll make her play them with us. This, I think, was the uh, the first game that I impulse bought because I knew nothing about it. What's it called? It's Dokito called Dokito Ice, Ice Cream. Cream. Ice Cream. Ice Cream. Ice Cream. <laughs> you said the same, like, speaking over each other. And so I really, this one just caught my eye. Like, a lot of things catch your eye because we're, we're walking through these endless, this was actually at uh, Yodobashi, which ah, is this, like, to multi, Yodobashi. multi-level, oh, no. massive store. Every level's got, like, lots of camera stuff, all the electronic stuff that you could imagine. And then they've got this hobby, one of the hobby levels. They've got, yeah, fit, like, a really long row, or a couple of rows, I think it is, of board games. They have heaps. That was such mm. an omission from the beginning of this section of the video. <laughs> Yorobashi Camera, which is actually in a lot of different places, mm. as well as Big Camera, two multi-level giant mm. ele- um, consumer electronics stores. They have a level that has toys. Find that level because yeah. they have lots of new board games. Yes. Not used, but new. No, only new board games. So this one caught my eye just because the graphic design is pretty cute. And so I kind of looked it up and got good ratings. And essentially it's a trick-taking game where as you're, the theme is you're like, you're eating ice cream and you want to make sure that you don't overeat because if you eat more than three scoops, you're going to get kicked out of the ice cream parlor. The, the owner's like, no, you've had enough, you're out. So the whole thing is you're playing around, trying to be the one who gets the most points. The points are, um, as you win a trick, you get to get one of the the bowls of ice cream to put over your cone. So everyone starts with a little just empty cone. And the color of that ice cream is going to be based on the color of the suit that won mm. the, um, the trick. And so as you're kind of going through, um, the way it's going to score at the end is you're going to, if you don't go over the four scoops, if you manage to just like stay within the three, you're going to multiply the number of cards of tricks that you've won. For example, if it's a chocolate, so then it's the brown, times the number of chocolate scoops that I have. And so whoever wins that round gets a trophy. And it's like whoever kind of manages to get the most trophies is going to win, or like 10 trophies or 10 points wins the game. So it's barely, it likes, it's again, it's just a trick taking uh, base with that little twist of don't go over the um, for so don't win too many too many tricks in the round so that looks pretty cute the artwork just looks adorable it does look adorable and that's the main that was the main draw draw for me <laughs> so that is dokito ice cream and isu and this one <laughs> is called boast or nothing mm-hmm. and first of all the artwork on this is so unusual it is just it's very strange and this game came out at a previous tokyo game market mm. and i thought this is just going to be a game that i'm never going to be able to find yeah anywhere. it's pretty kind of quirky yeah. yeah and the thing with japan is that the hobby is quite well established and if you look for them there are um not a lot of board game stores but there's certainly a lot of board game cafes yeah. places where you can go and sit down and like pay an admission fee and use these huge libraries Mm. and those cafes sometimes but not always have a small section of games that you can buy yes and this particular little uh, tucked away in the middle of nowhere um store how, I'm trying to think of where that was. No, I'm not going to remember off the top of my head. Uh, oh, no, it was in Yokohama. Yeah, that was in Yokohama. In Yokohama. Yeah. Um, just out of Chinatown. Um, there was a board game store there, a uh, board game cafe, and mm-hmm. it had a small store associated with it. And this was tucked at the back 
underneath, really low down. And I just like behind saw... other games. And I'm like, is that? I and think I was like, the game. oh my goodness, it was worth coming all this way because I found this one game um, because that's yeah. how it gets when I get like very obsessed with Anyways. finding titles. Anyway, the Most game or nothing. Yeah. Um, the game is a super cute in that it's all about um, trying not to be boastful and I suppose the way that that comes to life is that there is an ever-evolving Trump suit mm -hmm. and in this game you are simply going to be playing out tricks but there is a um, set of tokens that are in the middle of the table that are different suit colors and uh, in a particular order and so no matter what the lead suit is the Trump is always going to be the color that is on top of the stack but if that color wins the trick then it moves to the bottom of the stack mm. so the um yeah so the it's color sort of, yeah the, the trump is the trump, cycling you, through it's yeah. always changing mm -hmm. and then there are two other elements to this that i think make it sound interesting we're yet to play this game um one is that there's a pass card so you can play mm -hmm. a pass card no matter whether you can follow um, with what's in your hand and it is always the lowest rank card so you're not going to win the trick but maybe you don't want to win the trick yeah. because the other element of this game is you want to get a very precise number of tricks depending on the number of players in the game there will be a set goal to get for example you must win three tricks mm. and so um, you're looking at how that trump is changing you're wondering whether you're going to use your pass card or not and you're trying to hit that target mm. I think it sounds cool. I love the artwork. The it's so artwork random. is pretty outrageous. It's like some of it is like it, 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 they are trying to kind of be very sort of tongue in cheek and very, but it's like this sort of mustachey character just being boastful in all sorts of different ways. So like one suit might be about money and another might might be about like, eating competition. Yeah, and yeah. it's like I've got the most this and the most. So it's all yeah. It's a pretty quirky. It is very yeah. quirky theme. Um, it is boast or nothing. Yeah. Now another one I have over here, I have Perfumery, which is uh, I believe not a trick taking game. But this, but this had um, been on my radar because um, a couple of people from the, uh, the Joy fam had actually mentioned that I might like it. It's all about running. So you're a per perfume brand. And I'm pretty sure we covered it on back chat. Did we? Yeah. I am the worst. <laughs> I don't think that do Yeah, it was on Kickstarter. I don't remember this. Mm. Sometimes I'm like a goldfish and mm. I'm <laughs> like, I've, but anyways, so in this but game, a big Joey fan favorite, for yes. sure. So in this game, and I love the theme. This is why I'm like, I can't remember. I can't believe that I've forgotten it. If I actually cover it, it might've been before mm. my time. Mm. It might've been when you were doing Kickstarter Diaries by yourself. Back the, t like check the tapes and see if, um, <laughs> yeah. So in Perfumery, you're running a, perf yeah, like a perfume brand and you're trying to, by the end of the game, have the most points or be the most sort of highly sought after uh, perfume brand. So you're going to be uh, kind of order fulfillment, not order fulfillment, but creating a bit of a, an engine and then creating different perfumes by adding different ingredients or the scents that are gonna go into into your perfume. And then there's different levels. There's like the base, middle and top. So I, I don't know enough about Perfumery to understand that yet, I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot more once I, uh, I play it and then I'll be like I am an expert in perfumery if that's even the the name for it but yeah I believe it's a combination of um drafting and I believe it's that type of drafting is it the wisdom draft where you when you're you're kind of getting cards but then other players get to get cards at the same time mm. and then there's a little bit of worker placement there's a little bit of uh like engine building so it's it's got a lot of the ingredients of something that I should really connect with and it's a really cool thing I don't know I almost so. got to play it I think I don't correct me if I'm wrong but I think it was Lisa who brought this game um to play at Dice Tower West mm. and I sat down and then somehow got called away or fell asleep with my eyes open I'm not sure <laughs> but well that's what you get for like trying to push you know I past know. 3 a.m every day but this was definitely on my radar and when I want I absolutely want to pick up and we picked it up second hand very yes. happy to find that that is yeah. perfumery uh, I've gone mm -hmm. over here yep. which is a little very popular popular game in Japan called Nana. Mm. Um, now Nana uh, means seven in uh, Japanese and this game is all about sevens because it's actually it's not a trick-taking game I should say right away. In fact it's a memory game. It's a combination of memory and what's the Set other one? Collection. Go, go fish. So I think so it's that, yeah, that combination of those two. Yeah. Which by itself doesn't sound Sounds like awful. it should be much. Yeah. Sounds awful. And yet you're like, go fish. I played that when I was a kid yeah. on memory, and like turning over and making pairs. You're like, no. Yet, no, no. as a gamer you're, like, gamer, you're like, no, no, no. This actually works really, it's actually really, really fun. Well, it's, and yeah. one of our most played games that we played with yeah. Monique and Naveen 
lots of Four people who love heavy games. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's play Nana. Let's, let's play, play Nana again. again. Yeah. So lots of fun. It's a really interesting game because everybody is dealt a hand of cards, and the you cannot change the order of those cards. But what you need to do is put them in ascending order from lowest to highest in your hand. Mm. And on your turn, what you're trying to do is you're trying to find three cards with the same value on them. So you might use one from your hand, but you can only use the lowest or the highest mm -hmm. from your hand. And you get to either look underneath some cards that are in front of um, all players in the mm -hmm. middle of the table, like in a game of memory, or ask another player if you could, if they could please reveal the lowest or highest um, yeah. card in their hand. Yes, yeah. be like, Amy, you know, show your lowest card. And ah, it might be I'll a be like, two. Yeah, it's a two. Like, mm, interesting. And then it means that you can keep, you can keep going. If I have a two, I can show a two, and yes. then I can keep going until. Any number that's Although you not probably a two wouldn't reveal up. your no, two. You you're trying don't. to find yeah. the next one. So I might be like, I might be like, I'll check one of the the center ones. So if I already knew that there was a two somewhere, then I reveal that as soon as you you can show the three um, cards of the same value, then you collect them. You as collect a set. them. Yeah. And the way you win this game is really interesting because if. Every set has a corresponding set. So, for example, if you did have the three twos, what you would want is then the three fives because if they sum to seven, yeah. then you instantly win the game. If they sum to seven or it's the yeah. subtract to seven or it's the set of sevens. The set of sevens will instantly win you the game or if you just get three sets of any numbers will also win mm -hmm. you the game. Yeah. And so you are basically trying to memorize where all the cards are at. It's hilarious. There's, and there's, there's no way around it. This is a memory-based yeah. game. Yeah. You I'm trying to remember that Monique's mm. lowest card is a four yeah. and you turned that card over and it was a four. I'm sure of it before. And yeah. then maybe Maggie might have the four as her lowest card because she just shed a three. Yeah. And so now her next lowest might be a four. Yeah. And so you're just trying to work out where the position of all these cards are. It's way more fun than it should be. It really the is. The art is really, really, really cute. cute. Yeah. I had to stop myself buying also the Christmas edition <laughs> because after Taco, Cat, Goat, Cheese, Pizza, I can't keep collecting these oh. games that are the same. I, um, I am regretting not getting more copies of it though, because it's the same game. Yeah. yeah, but just because it's a good one to just like bring places, even give us gifts to, to people. It's That's an excellent true. like warm up. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess we'll just have to go back to Japan. I guess, guess so we'll have to go back to Japan. What a shame. Uh, all right, okay. so I'll go to this one. So this is a little one called Schadenfreude, which I believe is a German. This, I may get this completely wrong, but I believe this is a, a, a term in German, and it's referring to that the feeling of satisfaction that you get at the expense of someone else's misfortune. And I think it's particularly if someone else was kind of overshooting something mm. or like being overly yeah because in this game the whole thing is you don't want to i can't remember what the number is but it's that you don't want to be the uh, the first person to uh, reach i think it might be like 40 points um that triggers the end of game and that person is out so you so you always want to be kind of coming in second so the person who plays the second highest card or the second yeah highest card in a trick it's a trick taking game um then is going to win that trick so it's always kind of coming in as like second best second, second best mm -hmm. um and then there's this whole thing about the we have actually played this mm -hmm. we have actually played this before but there's this whole this was a little while back there's this whole thing about also the points that you're collecting so based on how you're winning those tricks you're getting to collect cards from that trick and then that's going to be what's adding up to your to your total. So that's why you want to make sure that you get, I think it's the closest to 40 without going over. And mm -hmm. the game end is triggered when someone goes over 40. Mm -hmm. So yeah, fairly simple. We played simple. it at Gen Con, didn't we? Yeah, I think we did, yes. Mm -hmm. Was it with Candice? Candice taught yes. us. Yes, yes, yes. Candice, 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 Candice was like, from BGG Yes, so at the end of the game, like at the end of a night, we've played Very like late. your brain is just done because you've done so many things. And Candice was like, hey, do you want to play a little, you know? <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay. Little Japanese like, trick-taking yeah, game. Yeah, like, okay. Yes, that's right. That's, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's So that is a Japanese trick-taking game with a German name. And <laughs> yes. I think we've got some kind of, yes, we've got a German designer, German, French French publisher, mm -hmm. German designer yeah. game uh, with a Japanese spirit theme. So mm. we'll go here next, which is this game called Tatsu. Um, I wonder if this was actually a Gen Con release. Uh, sorry, not a Gen Con, Essence Spiel release last year. I'm not sure, but it was from 2022. Mm. But it was everywhere in Japan. Mm -hmm. So this is a game that's big in Japan, maybe because it's got the Japanese theme. Um, but yeah. this game is a really, really interesting trick taker. Yeah. It's 
almost pushing the bounds of what is a trick taker. It's quite interesting. It's a, uh, you play with four players, you play on two teams of two and you sit diagonal to your partner. But in this game, and basically the both teams have the same set of cards. So one's red and one's yellow. Mm. And there are these multiplier cards in your own colored suit that you are trying to make sure that you win because you want to have them in your set of one cards at the end of the tri- at the end of the round because they're going to multiply out the points yeah. that are also in your cards. So it's going to get cards. any yeah. points. If you don't end up any with point. any of them, you'll have no points, so even if you've won tricks. Thinking yeah. about it the other way, your ultimate goal is really to stop the other team getting their own multipliers, so That's therefore right. they will score zero. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's the first team to get to 500 points. But what's really interesting about this game is that Uh, when you go to play a card, you can either play a card from your hand or you can request that someone around the table plays a card for you. Mm -hmm. And you can actually see what colored suit the cards are on the back of the cards. So I can see maybe Maggie's on the opposing team, but I can Mm. see she's actually only got one or two of our suit. Yellow and red. Yellow and red, yeah. 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 So she's only got one or two of this suit that I'm playing as. And so I'll be like, maybe she's hoarding the high value cards. Mm. Maggie, can you play for me instead? Which is the other thing because you can only ever play, so on your turn, it can only be your color. So it's your color or your suit from yourself or from something that you call out for someone else to play. And we often ended up playing, like we wanted to be mean and we're like, ha ha, I'm gonna play like, this person's card that you know that I was like well no 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 you're not allowed to and now they know <laughs> that you yeah. have their high card yeah, or that card or whatever. Going to play it. Yeah. yeah so that's the interesting thing you can only ever on your turn you're only ever playing your color your either suit. from your hand mm-hmm. or from other people's which hands. is it makes it very different it's very unusual but I found it really intriguing and I it makes I, your brain hurt yeah it really does it really it's really like, does wait no but then yeah but yeah. also you really have to card count because yes. there's a set number of cards and you're like, oh no, we only had one really high card and that's already gone out of yeah. the game. So that means that what's the next highest card that could be in play? I don't have it. Who could possibly have it? Mm. Does my partner have it? Like there's just a lot of dynamics going on there. Yeah. I, I think it's very, very interesting. I don't know if it's my favorite type of game, but the reason for that is because I tend to, I don't enjoy as much the team-based games, mm. more because I get really anxious that I don't want to let my teammate down mm-hmm. and that I'm going to play the wrong thing or like, so whenever you have like team base, kind of like teach you as well, or yeah. like is it bridge or like yeah so where you've got my knobby yeah I kind of get a bit of like a layer of anxiety I'm like oh. and then on top of that you have this whole thing of like oh no oh, who has like, my card I feel like Naveen and I had such good symbi- symbiosis <laughs> on this game and we like won the trial game and then we lost the real game so that was that was sad uh, uh, rigged yeah game was rigged all right i have a couple of little games here um which are really cute because they kind of come in this little kind yeah, of packaging same so same publisher this one is called chefy which i haven't and they're both solo games so they don't all do solos but they can often have really quirky sort of themes but this one is chefy it is a chefy chefy sheep sheep because it's so sheep. It's sheep yeah it's sheep sheep-y. so you're a shepherd um and you're trying to you've got cards um representing sheep the size of your Herd, her, uh, your herd. I can't. Why can I say the word <laughs> herd? The words. The the word. A herd of sheep. Herd. Yeah. yeah. So they they go from one through to a thousand. So it's like one thirty, a hundred, and so the cards as you're playing those, you start with one on the table, and as you're playing different cards, they'll allow you to um, to do different things, like kind of swap cards or double up the size, and some of them might actually make you reduce the size, and the whole game, you're trying to just be able to manage to get to play the thousand uh, card, so make a, a herd of a thousand sheep. If you go through the deck three times, and you're not able to get that thousand sheep being the you know, the card on the table, then you lose the game. So it's one of those like you're kind of trying to crack the puzzle along the way. I haven't played it yet. Um, it seems like a really interesting little. I hear it's really good. That's I had it on my list to buy for Maggie because yeah. I heard that it was really good. But then when we went to buy this one, she saw the next I one. I saw this one. So that one's from the same publisher. Shifi. And she was like, actually, I like, like this theme. Mm, I like this. Oh, more. you still have the price there in uh, in yen. So this one is Fish Farewell Forever. Um, and it's a what was the the tagline? 
Escape from Samsara, Zen Mind Solitaire card game. So the whole theme of this game is essentially enlightenment, like reaching enlightenment by getting rid of, so you're kind of um, trying to, uh, yeah, not shed, but, but eliminate from the game all your attachment to different desires that you have. <laughs> and so you're using virtue cards mm. um, to, to kind of pay for the release of those, uh, those attachments. But then the virtue card themselves uh, have a value. So it's almost like you then need to use virtue cards to offload the remaining virtue. And the idea is to get to the point where you kind of get rid of everything and, and don't have anything left. I have not been able to win this game yet because the first time I played it's like this is too simple and then I reached the end I'm like oh wait a second <laughs> now I'm stuck I've lost her I've lost yeah okay okay and then, so then it's like oh now I've got it and then as I was playing it's like I've got it I've got it. it's like I don't got it wait a second so I still haven't been able to to kind of win this it's about having the right balance towards the end because you're kind of going through it uh, multiple times and then you're putting like cards in this like the this sort of uh, memory area and then you're having to pay every time that you're kind of cycling through the deck so if you run out of those cards again you, there's multiple ways of kind of losing so a really interesting like love the theme but really interesting concept as a solitaire trying to yeah crack that I like the name I like the fish farewell forever but then also in Japanese it's Sakana Sazanami Sayanada which is also really <laughs> nice in, Jap um, in Japanese as well so. and I was like what um, what's Fish Barrel Forever? And I wonder if it's got something to do, if it's a bit of a reference to So Long and Thanks for All the Fish. So from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, when it's like the end of the world, it's like they have the whole kind of So mm. Long and Thanks for All the Fish. I don't know if that's <laughs> related or maybe they that both was like, maybe the both thing, yeah. referencing some kind of Zen thing. I there don't know, but that's an, yeah, an interesting little uh, solo one. Um, Cauldron 15 and... Honestly, getting through this list, they're all starting to blend together a little bit. Uh, but this one we have actually played, so bear with me. This Hot is tip, a... if you're going through 40 <laughs> trick-taking style games together, that a lot of them you haven't played some... It, it can be... It can get a bit confusing it can't, that is not a hot tip <laughs> <laughs> this is a hot tip just, that just, was not know, a tip that was just uh, wouldn't have guessed wouldn't have guessed um, this is something to watch out for because um, so Cauldron 15 is a trick taking game <laughs> it's a game um, that came out a little while ago but I think it might have been maybe only a couple of years and I think maybe originally at Tokyo Game Market but picked this up um, from as new at a mm -hmm. board game shop and this game is so cutely illustrated, I'll first of all say, because the designer is also an artist mm. and did all of the illustrations. It's very cute. Very, very, like, very yeah. cute. Yeah. Um, but what you're doing in this game is in every trick, you are trying not to bust over 15. Mm -hmm. so hence the cauldron 15. It's different depending on the player count, but let's just say 15 for ease. And what, no, you're just all coming back to it's you It's all now. coming we back to me. It's like I'm having one of those like moments. We actually of like, played yes. this um, yes. in the airport while we're waiting for mm -hmm. our plane to return back to Australia. Um, and we're basically, you are trying not to bust in the 15 because if you bust, uh, that is really bad for you because you're automatically going to take the, the highest, highest card, card yeah. in the trick. And you don't want to take... Um, high cards because at the end of the game you also don't want to bust over 15 with your points. total yeah. pool of points um, and so with this game what's really interesting is depending on the order in which you fall in the ranking in the tr in the trick itself depends on which card you get to pull out of that trick so assuming nobody goes bust and we as a group maintain under 15 mm. then the winner of the trick gets to take the lowest card yes. and put it into their pool of points thereby stopping them from going bust with 15 mm. there's another little interesting twist that if you can collect one card from each of the five suits and have mm. that down in front of you in your point collection area you get to remove a card, any card from uh, your point collection. Which so that can help you end. ditch a higher point yeah. card. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the game. It's also the whole, if you, if you would play the card in a trick that makes the trick add up to exactly 15, oh, exactly 15. then yeah. it immediately ends the trick and you actually get to have your choice of any of the cards right. played in the trick. Yeah, yeah so, so it's actually, like over, yeah. really cute concept. And I mm. think it's going to, we only played it at two players. Yes. And because we only played it at two players, there was this weird like variant where you're 
throwing oh, yeah. another card into right. the trick. And so I'm really looking forward to playing it. It goes up to five players. So I'm really interested to play this at yeah. more players and see how it goes because the, the concept is really good. Yeah. Very pretty, really cute artwork. And the theme is that you're all like witches trying to make medicine. And so it's like creating that exact concoction and not going nowhere, which is kind of cute. cute. Yeah. Cauldron 15. All right. So we've got another one, one non-trick-taking game here. Uh, also not Japanese. And not Japanese. It just happened to Nothing be... Nothing to do with Japan. It just happened to be in the shop. Um, Enchanted Plumes, where you are collecting, or not collecting, you're kind of building this uh, inverted pyramid of uh, feathers of a peacock. So peacock feathers in different colors. The interesting thing with this is the way that you're, as you're playing your, your cards, you would start by... Um, say on your first call on your first line you you would be putting um kind of uh, feathers of different colors as soon as you start going into the the next line underneath that top line is locked and so what that means is those are the only colors that now can be played in the bottom line and that bottom line is going to be fewer fewer cards in that sort of you know inverted pyramid type if you manage to complete it and end with the final um card the final card gets to be turned and then that will add additional points for essentially like completing every... Completing the peacock. Complete, you're completing yeah, you're completing the, the, the full you peacock. Put a little head on it and then it looks like a peacock. Well, yeah, it's kind of like it's got all the sort mm. of colors. But the, the other thing is that it'll give you additional points because mm -hmm. it'll not only score the, the points for like that card, but then also an extra point for every every card in the, um, uh, in the, in the pyramid. So it's a really kind of interesting balance because you can actually the game can end quite quickly and mm -hmm. so you can start multiple um, pyramids but you don't know if maybe like oh am i overshooting it am mm -hmm. i undershooting it so that's a really yeah interesting one i believe Very you only really game. yeah you only really get to score i'm, now I'm sort of testing my my um memory testing with your patience my testing my patience <laughs> I'm, testing, I'm testing everyone's patience um but yeah i think you only get to score with the bottom like the card that's at the bottom that's the number that gets to score but the very top row which is usually your longest those are all negative points mm. so you kind of want to make sure that you're using low numbers at the top so yeah lots of different things going on fairly when you're playing it it's fairly straightforward yeah a lot more straightforward than the way that i <laughs> explained it's it but and it's really beautiful reason, as really well really popular in japan not yeah. a japanese game but and really beautiful artwork as well with the the feather art yeah yeah and this one is another little interesting one that i believe was also a previous game market game um, this is muscle taking and the theme of this game is you are a bodybuilder in a I believe male only bodybuilding competition okay. um, where you are setting poses mm. I don't know how the trick taking works we haven't played it yet yeah. but it's something to do with the poses that are most valuable oh, that are okay. going to score you more points or something um, but I just thought the theme was really quirky <laughs> it, was it, really came, cool. it came up on a lot of people's different lists I thought this is another one where I'm, I'm never going to find that yeah. that's going to be a needle in a haystack and yeah. there it was there it was and so I grabbed it and I was really happy to pick that up that is go. muscle taking uh, I've got one that is actually very popular, Skull King. We've never actually We've played never this. We've never played it. But a lot of people really, really love this. Not only that, it's a lot of people's favorite trick-taking game yeah. um, as well. So the thing with Skull King is you have this really interesting, it's all a pirate theme or like high seas and pirate theme. And you have this hierarchy of cards where they all have different suits, but then you have a pirate suit, which is kind of like the black suit that is a trump. So it doesn't matter where you've been playing, then, you know, if someone plays the pirate, then it's like that becomes the trump suit that's the trump suit and then yeah but then you also are playing 10 rounds and the number of cards is based on the round so it's like for first round everyone just starts with one card so you mm -hmm. only get to and then you're also doing simultaneous bidding of how many tricks you think you're going to win for that round so i can't remember what the chant is the the pirate chant but then when you reveal then everyone kind of commits to that if you manage to, you only get to score positive points if you manage to exactly hit mm. the bid that you had and obviously you know for example for that first round you might have a couple of people saying one and it's like well obviously only one person gonna win because it's only gonna be one trick play and so um if you what was the other one? If you if you don't hit your bid, is usually going to be I think it's like minus ten points for every trick that you do end up winning. Ooh. So as you can imagine, as you're going down to the final round, you're going to have ten cards. So it's mm. out of potential ten tricks, things can get quite quite hectic. But the other thing with the suits is you also have these special cards. So on top of the pirate cards, then you have like a mermaid card that can trump that, and then there's a there's another kind of 
um, different type of pirate that can trump the mermaid and then there's like the skulking that can trump that other card but then if you play the mermaid on top of the skulking the mermaid actually trumps the skull Ooh, so there's like chaos. there's a yeah there's there's sort of this sort of funky uh, hierarchy okay or funny hierarchy of uh, of trumps so i think that adds a lot to the sort of I'm chaos of it. trying it it plays yeah. up to eight people yeah. i know that it's better with a bigger group and it's one of those games where everyone you know if, you, if you're going to evaluate trick taking games i feel like this is always one that's in the mix so we need to play it and it kind we of reminds me a little bit of like libertalia with the chaos of uh, you know yeah. so many players and people kind of going oh, yeah. so that could be interesting yeah, so that's a skull cool king yeah. uh, well another one where you are bidding on how many tricks you're going to win is this little japanese game called loops and Luzu, <laughs> Luzu, Luzu, um, Luz is uh, a, a trick-taking game where Hanabi style, all of your cards face outwards. Mm. So you're holding your hand of cards, but you can't see them, but all of your opponents can see them. And what's interesting about this basic concept is you are going to be playing cards blindly out of your hand into a trick. Um, but the most interesting thing is you can see everybody else's cards. So you have an idea of what your cards, the range your cards mm. probably fall into because they've all got all the high cards, mm. but they don't know what they have. And so when you are bidding, you are almost bluffing or you could bluff to be like, oh, wow, you guys have really low cards, so I'm going to go all in because mm. I'm going to win every trick, which is going to be unsettling mm. for everybody else who can't see their cards, uh, even though you're bluffing. So or that's, the other way around. Yeah. That's the whole concept of this game. We only played one round of this game. Definitely interested to play it more. Um, that's another one that's going to take a little while to like wrap your head around yeah. it because you can see the other thing is like you there's a the player next to you which is going to arrange that hand in uh, numerical right. order so yes. you'll see so you'll so see you the back of idea. them so you'll see the suit so you'll see the color of the, of the cards that you have and you know that they're arranged from lowest to highest mm -hmm. so you can kind of when you're playing you, you know it's like well I'm going to play my lowest, lowest whatever that right. is yes. of that color or my highest whatever that is but yeah. you don't necessarily know that's what that's right is. because you arrange the hand of the person next to you yeah. before you pass it on to them that's right yeah so, so very, uh, yeah. i'm intrigued to see how this plays out it's <laughs> like some interesting mechanics there Ooh, um all right super. i'll go into this one this is a you game because i was like i'm not attracted to the cover no. it's an abstract game even the number of times i said should i get it should i get it? she's like no 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 don't get i don't it. know anything about it but my answer is no i know that it's abstract and I, there's nothing in the artwork that but it looks so cool does it uh, it's called moon base so moon base and i'll show you the back um so we essentially have all these different uh just like the cover the the surface of the moon you have all these different rings and they're in i believe three different colors there's um one player is going to be silver the other player is going to be gold and then there's like a neutral um, blackish sort of color and you're going to be placing these rings around like around the on the surface of, of the moon with the aim of them placing rings balancing on top of two other rings that are already placed so that you can put one of your discs that kind of fits in the middle so there's like small rings big rings and then you need to place one of the big rings on top so that you can put your your disc and those are going to be the things that then give you points uh towards the end of the game so they're going to be those big discs and then like these little i don't know <laughs> but that's that's and you don't want to know i don't want to i'm like i don't know how you're gonna play this two it's, player, like, it's a two player abstract. abstract yeah yeah um so that's all i was able to kind of figure well, out now we know now that we've done our 10 out of 10 abstracts that actually you kind of like some abstracts some of them maybe I'm, this will be one of them well, I was gonna Odds say I be. was gonna say probably not, but then again, some of the ones that I've ended up really connecting with, I could not have foreseen. So there you go. we'll see. Moon well, base. Anyway, we shall see. This video has been going on forever and forever ever. So I'm gonna move day. through some of the last ones pretty quickly. Oh my goodness! Uh, yes. Because this is Yokohama Roll and Write, uh, which was just another one that we picked up new. Uh, obviously, it's a bit hard to get the what's the oh my goodness I'm having a moment regular the, Yokohama and Yokohama Duel yes the TMG versions oh um, yeah but yeah, this is TMG's the Japanese publisher Okazu mm -hmm. and so this is the Roll and Write which we've never played um, but I want to give it a go I like Yokohama yeah. and the like merchants Roll and in the area of Yokohama which we've so now been it. to which was actually pretty cool so yeah, Yokohama was here. so much fun now this one is a Vivarium or Vivarium where you are collecting like relics and creatures and things but the way you're doing that is you're actually playing dominoes and matching dominoes to give you coordinates that then will relate to different areas on the board of where you can actually collect um, and I believe it's going to then end up being a bit of like a set collection and a bit of uh, engine building potential a tableau 
building. Beautiful artwork. Beautiful artwork. Um, it got good good ratings. I think that was the main thing. So like the beautiful artwork, the fact that it's using dominoes is one mm. of the main mechanics for defining or deciding where you go. It's like I haven't seen that mm. before. Um, that's all I really know about it because we haven't played it yet. But yeah, you're gonna <laughs> take, You have to take a chance. Sometimes on some you just have to take some risks. Yeah, and this one looks pretty. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, visually. So. The, well, this one's left field. This was secondhand. The bottom of a secondhand pile of games. Yeah. Um, this is a very rare uh, expansion to Coimbra, mm -hmm. which is one of my favorite games. Mm. I absolutely adore Coimbra. Um, and so when I saw this, I had to have it, even though it was $30 and it adds not much to the I wanna, game. I want to show. Adds four dice. It's a I really believe. nice um, magnetic box, it is. which it's is a beautiful cool. Box. But then this is all there is in it. Like, it's four just dice. Bad. And uh, four little meeples. Um, but <laughs> I believe that then this is um, this can be a dice tray for all the other mm. dice in Coimbra. Um, so. But anyway, I'm a completionist when it comes to my favorite games, and mm. so that uh, very much was like, oh, that's yeah. cool. Got to get it. Yeah. Got to get it. Um, now the hamster next one sandwich. is ham sandwich. Ham sandwich. Oh, I, I thought it was hamster no, sandwich. No, it's ham sandwich. Ham sandwich. Yeah, he's ham. Of ham, course, the hamster. So, so the hamster is actually the chef. You're not eating eating the hamster. Um, the This game is kind of like, do you, do you remember how to play or you, should I talk about it's it? Like a, it's a rondelle, isn't it? Because I love yeah, a rondelle. So there, so you've got, and we covered this on, uh, yeah, we do did. you remember this? Well, I do remember okay. covering this okay. one because it's so cute. It cute. Um, so we've got, um, you've got, you're kind of making three sandwiches in the middle and as this hamster is kind of moving around, different sandwiches, are, uh, different ingredients are going into the sandwich. And there's, I believe somewhere there's like recipe, fulfillment essentially mm -hmm. there's particular combinations of ingredients that you want to have but then at certain points you can throw in a the hamster. hamster just jumps and dives on top of the the sandwich and that hamster can either be holding nothing which means that it's going to be eating that last ingredient that was put yep. there or it can be bringing an ingredient it could be contributing an ingredient and only the person who played the hamster knows one, if it's bringing an ingredient, and if it is an ingredient, what it is, because it can mess up with the recipe. And so at the end of it, you, you people are going to be trying to guess which sandwich is going to be the one that kind of meets and my recipe needs. Uh, I think you're trying to deduce what that yeah. player is likely to yeah, have yeah. done to yeah. that sandwich. So that's essentially it, but it's that's super, super it's, cute. It's going to be... It's going to be very light. It's extremely uh, light. I wanted to back this when it was on Kickstarter, which is the reason why I bought it retail because I just thought it was really cute and then the postage was really expensive yeah. to Australia, yeah. so I didn't back it. But also, it only plays two to three players, so it's a very narrow <laughs> player count. <laughs> we'll which see is how we make get. it really difficult because usually we play these lighter games when you've got a big yeah. group of people who just want to play a game but they're not really gamers. It's, oh, so, or take it to a con, lighter games we take to a con. Um, we'll, yeah. see. We'll, so we'll see. We'll see. We'll play it. It's super we'll cute, see. though. So that Stay was the, tuned yeah. about ham sandwich. Um, and then <laughs> this little game, which was only $5 secondhand. What a win. 500 yen. Mm. Um, Shibuya, which is uh, all about the, if you are unfamiliar with Shibuya, it is where the scramble crossing is mm. or the busiest uh, pedestrian crossing in the world. And it's very famous for that. And when you cross over this crossing, everyone has their cameras out because mm. everyone's trying to capture the craziness because people um, move from all directions. Yeah. Sort of like a, yeah, everywhere. Sort yeah. Of thing. And Maggie thought that every intersection like, in Japan was is this the Shibuya one? crossing. Like whenever there was a big intersection, it's like, are we doing it? Are we walking it? We're even became, though I've been there before. It also became a bit of a... Yes, you've been there more than once. Um, and Monique would say, is this it, Maggie? I'm like, I think so. Are we, <laughs> this, this feels like it might be it. It's like, nope. Um, anyway, no. but in this game, essentially, it is a drawing on that concept where it's a... I believe you're creating a set of tiles that makes a pedestrian crossing and you are trying to get your pedestrians from one side to the other, the pedestrians that you control. I think crossings usually will work. <laughs> yes, but the problem is, is that only one pedestrian can be on each tile at once, so you're getting in each other's way mm. trying to get your pedestrians across. So it's fairly abstract. If you play a two-player game, I think you're controlling maybe the two different colors. I think there might be mm. four colors because then if you're playing a um, four-player game, you play two on two. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, interesting. It was $5 and I was like, so thematic with yeah. Japan. I mean, when you're there. So I really yeah. wanted to try it. Shibuya. Went in Shibuya and I was in Shibuya at every crossing. So, you know. 
That was in, in your mind. In my mind. You're always in Shibuya. Okay, this is it. Um, and so this is uh, the last one that I'll talk about. This one is another one that I just read about that I was looking for. Uh, I don't know when it came out, um, but it's called Knights with Poison. And it's about these knights who are trying to get um, treasure out of a dungeon or something mm. and then escape with that treasure without getting stung by a bee or any other allergen. <laughs> yes. And I could relate to that. I have a lot of allergies. <laughs> you have a lot of allergies. Yeah. Yes. Um, but in this game, uh, basically, you are, I think, as you, it's a trick taking game, I should say, and as you're playing tricks, you are collecting gemstones mm. and then basically you are trying not to be undone by some kind of element that involves an allergy and you lose the gems. I think from memory is one of those like the first thing is fine it's just if you so it's like it's a little bit of push your luck I think because oh, then okay. it's like the second time you get the same poison or allergen then you're right. in trouble yeah from memory I don't know we'll have How to play it how cute is the art though it's pretty cute it is artwork. super cute yeah. and the theme just drew me in and trick taking yeah. I was like yes 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 yeah gotta get this game with the yeah we haven't played it yet because it was a three to five player mm -hmm. and this we got this after we were no longer with uh, yeah, Monique and Naveen, so it was just the two of us. Just the two of us. So if you are considering getting to Japan in the near future, drop us a comment below. We'll try to answer your questions as best we can. It's definitely worthwhile getting to one of the game markets if mm. you can. It's such a great experience to go and see just these really indie mm. publishing, self-starter yeah, like yeah. game design. It's really amazing to be to see and be a part of it. I yeah. didn't even say that we actually, within the first 15 minutes arrived and someone said, Simone Luciani is about to take the stage. Oh, yeah. And I was like, what? excuse me? Yeah. One of my favorite designers. So we like rushed over, like into the crowd, kind of lined up mm. in the crowd, sat down, were surrounded by people. And then he started talking yeah. and we realized that of course he was speaking in Italian, but luckily there was a translator there translating into Japanese. Yes. Yeah. So it's like, uh oh. So it was it's a sort of sad thing. It's like, no other like, language we understand. So I was oh, trying no. to follow with like Google the Google Translate, Translate live, but that's that sort of struggles at its best, particularly when it's trying to pick up from a microphone on a stage far away. So unfortunately, we weren't able to. The only words that I could stay. understand that he was saying were Lorenzo. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then he'd say Lorenzo, and I'm like, yay. Yeah. I was able to follow a little bit because Italian and Spanish, like yeah. sometimes you can kind of hear a fair bit, but mm -hmm. that's as far as, yeah. But anyway, if you go to Japan, we'll put some notes in the comments below. Sorry, this <laughs> this video is really blown out. So long. Uh, but if you did like the video, please like, subscribe to the <laughs> channel if you haven't already. Please consider becoming a Joey Fan member mm. if you do enjoy unpaid uh, content um, yeah. like this and like all of our game reviews and previews. Uh, but we'll be back with more board game content soon. Yeah. So bye for now. Bye.